what's going on everybody welcome this is whistle kick martial arts radio and today andrew and i are talking about designing a training space for a, a small environment like an apartment or something like that yeah there's a lot that you can do stick around you will find out more when we say more uh joined as often can't say always but often by andrew adams andrew thanks for being here that's such a really good on you yeah, it's always great to be here. And yes, I'm sporting my new whistle kick dragon hoodie for those yeah. that are watching. And, and I'm I'm sporting my vintage never settle hoodie <laughs> from like four years ago, uh, because my closet is pretty much all whistle kick stuff. If you're new to the show, welcome. This is where we talk about traditional martial arts and all of its forms and all the ways that it might impact your lifestyle. And if you want to see more about all the things that we're doing as Whistlekick to support you in your martial arts lifestyle, go to whistlekick.com. You're gonna find all kinds of cool stuff over there from apparel, like we talked about, training products, like our protective equipment, uh, training programs, like our free flexibility program, and so much more. In the store, if you use the code PODCAST15, you'll save 15% on something, anything. So check that out. Now this show, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, which has well over 700 episodes, which you can get access to all of them for free. You can go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for transcripts and show notes and photos and all kinds of good stuff like that. We do a, an interview on Mondays. We have a conversation usually for Thursdays, and it's all to connect, educate, and entertain you, you, the traditional martial artist, wherever you are and whatever you do. We bring in the show twice a week, like I said, and if that means something to you, if you want to make sure it sticks around, consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick, or buy something. Oh, <laughs> I love it. You do that. Uh, and if you want the whole entire list, that, that was that was a really good cadence. For those of you listening, you, you, didn't, you didn't see that. But Andrew, that was very consistent, which is not an easy thing to do, and I'm going to chalk that up to your drumming skill. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, if you want the entire list of all the things you can do to, to support us, to help us in our mission, to connect, educate, and entertain, whistlekick.com slash family. All right. So this came through, this was a, a listener suggestion, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a listener suggestion and um, also somewhat driven by actually a discussion I had with a, a good friend of mine uh, and someone that you know as well, Abby, who has, mm. uh, you know, lives in, in a smaller place and the, the, the thought was how to design a training space for yourself if you live in like a small apartment. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, <clears throat> I live in a house. I have a 20 by 20 out build, 20 foot by 20 foot outbuilding mm -hmm. in the back that I've got a really nice matted out. I've got a heavy bag. I've got all kinds of stuff out there, but not everybody has that luxury. And so the thought was how do you design a training space? How can you have a personal training space if you live in such a small apartment. Yeah. When I, when I think back to my days in an apartment, there were a few things that were of consideration that I think are relevant here. One is not being permanent, moving things around. You don't own that apartment. Most likely you're probably going to need to take stuff with you and you don't want to lose your security deposit. So that's one, <clears throat> two versatility. Yep. Whether or not you decide to send something like this up, you're probably not going to want it to occupy whatever space it's in indefinitely. You're gonna to wanna to be able to move it around. You know, it, you, you've been to my house and many of the listeners and viewers have seen elements of my living room where I have a stand up heavy bag and it gets moved around depending on what I'm doing. Like that's a good example of something like that. Is there anything else we have to think about? Potentially well, cost, really, it, it, but- Yeah, yeah. Co cost is part of it, I think um space size limitations yeah. not being permanent and the ability to do multiple like lots of things yeah. with it if possible yeah and then i think you need to connect here's my favorite word why you know what is it you're trying to train what are you trying to get better at you know you might have the room for a wooden dummy but what if you don't train in chinese arts and don't have any interest in that yep exactly you might have the space for a stand-up heavy bag but what if the focus of your at-home training is flexibility and forms right i think the number one thing that i would suggest starting with is not actually what are the martial arts things but how do you create more space 
is your couch easily movable, right? Because I, I think most of us, it's going to end up being the living room. Yeah, I, right. I, that is one, that's one place. I think the, the thing that every apartment has, I can't think of an apartment that doesn't, is a doorway and a door frame. It's kind of hard to not have a door. I mean, you could have a studio, you could have a studio space. But then you still have a door in. That's true. That's true. You could live in a yurt. You could live in a yurt. And, but if you live in a yurt, you probably have an outdoor space. True. So I'm thinking the two spaces that I was thinking would be, as you mentioned, living room for size, right? Mm -hmm. For actual square footage typically is larger than most places in the, the in your apartment and utilizing a door frame in yeah. a multitude of ways. Yeah. And anybody who's been on Patreon knows the propensity I have for developing training protocols around door frames. Like door yeah. frames are great because they're always there. They don't move. You can hit them kind of hard. The they house isn't falling back. down. What's that? They don't sass back. They do not sass back. At least I haven't hit mine hard enough that I, I get any response. So if we think about those two things, you know, we've got walls and floor, probably in a living room, door frames, doorways. What are some of the things that we might implement that are simple, probably inexpensive, and can be put up and taken down quickly? Well, the, the, the two that I, the first two that came to my mind in terms of actual things you would want to put in or utilize in your house um super easy because they attach to a door frame is mm -hmm. a pull-up bar yep. to work you know and both of these are, are more weight training sure. things um but a pull-up bar which you could actually leave connected on your door frame and still mm -hmm. use the door um and the second one is something that i got into in the early 2000s and and they're still around i haven't used it for a while but p90x mm. because you can again attach it to the door frame easily and take it off and for those that don't know they are straps and webbing that you use um your own body weight as the resistance to do different exercises suspension that, trainers is, is the yeah, broad category yeah. um and so those are the two that i'm like well you know for this would give you the this is just for more weight training yep but uh, those are the two that I first thought of. Sure. So you've got those and you certainly, um, if anybody out there who has purchased or is familiar with the strength training program that we have, uh, force, you know, it, it's designed with zero equipment. If you have equipment, you know, you can substitute things in. Absolutely. Um, one of the things I'm thinking of, and, and we've seen kind of gimmicky gadgets like this, you know, they make the rounds every few years. You've probably seen them on social media but some kind of a ball on a string mm -hmm. attached to a something. Now, if yep. you have a, uh, a pull-up bar, it makes a wonderful mounting point. You can often use it as a mounting point for those suspension straps. You can use it as a mounting point for a ball. Like it, it, absolutely wonderful because it comes down very easily, but you could take, you know, take a tennis ball and punch a hole and put some fishing line through it and hang it. Right, and yep. you can adjust the height potentially, right? Like depending on how you set it up, right? Now you can punch, now you can kick and you have a nice focus target. Cost you a couple bucks. Yeah. The other thing I thought would be something that I actually have used for drumming, mm -hmm. um, bass drummers, right? Everybody, whether you're a drummer or not, you probably have a vision in your head of what a, a person marching in a parade with a bass drum, right? It's strapped in front of you, you hit it from the side. Yeah. And I often have my bass drumming students practice standing in the middle of a door frame, facing the frame itself, and with their bass drum mallet, which in, in uh, the drumming that I do, the bass drum mallets are soft and fuzzy. Mm -hmm. So they hit the bass, the quote bass drum, which is actually the wall on one side, and then they hit the wall on the other side and it doesn't damage the wall because sure. it's, you know, it. and so my thought is utilizing a, a door frame like that, you could easily put up um, like a couple of pool noodles on the inside of the door frame. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll stick out into the doorway an inch or two, but that gives you something to actually kick and or hit sure. with, and you can get at it from multiple sides. 
as opposed to just you know putting a pool noodle on a wall like just on a flat wall you really can only hit it from the front like a makiwara board right yeah. this way you would be able to get it from different angles you can get your round kicks you could get hook kick things like that right. but now you're not kicking the door frame you're kicking pool noodles or something softer yeah yeah i like that i like that uh depending on how you set things up you may need to tape things down and this is where gaffer's tape or painter's tape might come yep. in really handy uh, for those of you who don't know, gaffer's tape is kind of like a fabric duct tape that doesn't leave residue. You want to be careful on paint, painted surfaces. It's probably going to pull the paint off. Painter's tape, by definition, probably will not, but doesn't hold quite as well. But painter's tape is great for the floor. If you're practicing forms and you train in a style where you want to make sure you end in the same place, that's great. Or if you're trying to track distance, like I, I'm working on kicking from a distance and kind of pushing forward on that kick. What's my starting point? And being consistent with that starting point and then being able to move that back. You know, a roll of painter's tape is two, three dollars. Yeah. Nothing. And one roll is gonna last you a very long time. Roll of gaffer's tape is more expensive, but um, pretty versatile as well. One of the things I always think of, and, and this I figured this out by accident. I ended up because of a whistle kick event, somebody left a very short, like sub four foot bow and i started using it inside and went oh i can still train 80 percent, 90 percent of what i need to train with this really short bow so if you think about smaller versions of weapons there's a lot you can do there tell me that you can't train you know full-on chinese spear or naginata with a short bow or is it going to be perfect no but it's enough that you can work through a lot of your things yeah yep the other training thing that people need to keep in mind is when you do forms you don't actually need a ton of space no. right to now to <clears throat> to work the full form yes obviously you do but when i was a kid and i was learning learning kata i would actually practice all my kata in the shower mm. standing in the bathtub be be and I, none of the moves were big but i'm going through them mentally yeah. and i i mean i would literally turn around and i would like do little baby steps like low block and then turn around a little bit and high i mean i wasn't doing fast moves yeah. but just going through it and on that same token if you want to work the power and the actual movement start in your starting position in your living room all you need is enough space to make one move go from mm -hmm. your starting position and do move one and then look at it check it out then back up to where you were before get in that first move then go to move two yeah right you you don't have to go from move one to two to three to four you don't need to have a 20 by 20 space in order to practice your forms you need enough space to do one move and then go back to the beginning and go do the set next move. I, I was brought up that you should be able to do all of your forms in a four foot square. If you have a really short stances and you're just kind of practicing it, walking through it, you don't need a ton of space. Yeah. If you're trying to improve things, maybe you're not working on the whole thing at once. You're picking one or two moves. There's a lot of things you can do there. And again, that's where the tape I think becomes really handy you know if you take a set and you realize oh you know i'm trying to start and end at the same point and i know that it's this movement here as opposed to this movement going the opposite direction that's throwing me off well now you can set up two pieces of tape and make sure you're consistent from a to b and then b to a mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as you practice through yeah yeah um Flexibility is something that people often want to train at home on their own. The flex program, you know, doesn't require anything again, but one of the, the bits of feedback that I get from people is, is what about measuring progress on flexibility tape? Yeah, sure. Tape. If you're measuring, you know, um, a center split, right? The, you, you experience the, the Bill Wallace way this weekend putting one foot against the wall or some kind of fixed point and then 
how far out can you go with the other foot? Put a piece of tape down. Because sometimes it's going to take you months to really move a lot. But oh, sure. it looks like I'm an eighth of an inch past where I was a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. Cool. Yep. Progress is still progress. Um, what else? That's a lot. There's a lot there. There's a lot you can do in combination. Yep. Um, the other thing, if you start to realize you, you have more, a little more space, maybe your apartment is a little bit bigger. You, they, you could purchase a, a stand up heavy bag mm -hmm. as opposed to a hanging one, like the one you have in your, your place. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that I thought that you could easily do depend because most of those stand up heavy bags, the base is the part that's really heavy, right? The yeah. base is the part that's filled with water or filled with sand or whatever. And the part that goes in it, you you know, you put down in it and maybe you turn it, screw it in a little bit, but that part is very light. It is. And it is such a thing that you could have the base outside because the base is always metal, uh, uh, plastic rather. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, who cares if it gets rained on, right? Or whatever. And you could just have this, the stand up part in your house in a closet mm. or whatever. And then when you want to go train, you could go outside. Like we're talking yeah. about training in your apartment, but if you have a small apartment, but you have an outside, that would be another option for you to then put your heavy bag outside yeah. and you don't have to carry the whole thing up and down the stairs or wherever you only have to carry the part that goes in the top. And most people don't realize that those are pretty light. Yeah. Yeah. That top part is quite light. And we understand not everybody's going to be able to keep things outside or train outside. Sure. You know, no, I don't expect that all of these suggestions apply to everyone, but mm -hmm. it gives you some some things to work from. Um, let's kind of go back around to the top one mentioned, like making what you have that is not training stuff, like your couch, your coffee table, mm -hmm. more, either more versatile or easier to move around. There are plenty of times that I kick furniture. Most people, if you have a coffee table, it's probably pretty sturdy. Mm -hmm. Take it, flip it on its side, kick it, punch it, turn it height-wise, brace it against a door frame, punch it, kick it. Yep. Now you've got another hard surface you can strike. Here's the other thing. How many times, Jeremy, and maybe the answer is zero, but how many times has an instructor put a chair in front of you and said, don't mm. kick it? There's a great one, a folding right? chair, and some so, kind of something to lift your leg over. Correct. So, you know, your coffee table's in the living room. You don't want to move it. Okay, practice your kicks over it. Or maybe turn it on its side so it's a little bit higher and kick over it. So you you didn't gain any space you didn't have to make a huge space in your living room you but you're utilizing the space and the things in it in a way that will still help you in your training right most people's coffee table again pretty durable but also not so tall that you couldn't take a kicking shield and wrap some rope around the handles and affix it so now you have a really impromptu striking service yep that's a yep. little bit softer and it's gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper and easier to store than some kind of heavy bag. Exactly, exactly. In fact, if you really wanted to, you could even rope it to the underside of the coffee table if it has four legs, mm -hmm. and then it's just always out of the way and you can just flip it up. Ooh, I like that. But don't, but don't do this. Okay, listeners, watchers, don't do this if you have a glass coffee table. Please don't put your body through glass because we told you to. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> also don't fall in the shower yeah that's also true that's a lot yeah i bet and, we're missing and, things and I, I really hope that listeners will say oh but what about this what about this what about this or tell us what you do yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah think about the space you have and how you can utilize it best keeping in mind functionality versatility and mobility, right? The ability to take down and e easily, because you know you may not live in that apartment forever, or maybe you may not own the space that you're in. Right. And just a reminder, I, 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 I think a lot of us get wrapped up in this idea that things need to be fancy. They need to be comprehensive. They don't. What's the one thing that you should be working on? You know, it's going to be different for different people. But 
What's the easiest way for you to train that one thing? Oh, I need to get stronger. I need better cardio. I need to work on this form. I need to work on my flexibility or my sidekick or what? So work on that one thing. You know, sadly, a lot of people said, spend the time and the money setting up some kind of training space and they never use it. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Yeah. Do something simple and use it until it needs to be something else and then change it for that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Andrew said it. I hope that we hear from many of you. What do you do? You can email us. You can post on the Facebook group when we post this episode in there, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, behind the scenes. You can leave comments on the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com when this episode comes out and tell us what you do there. And you know what? If there's a bunch of stuff that we missed, we'll do a part three. I'm looking at my, my outro notes. <laughs> uh i bet it's in the website you know you're gonna find photos and videos and links and transcripts and good stuff like that over there if you're trying to find something that happened in a past episode that's why we do the transcripts you can search for it there and if you're up for supporting us and the work that we do you've got lots of things you could share an episode leave a review on facebook google apple podcasts leave a rating on spotify those all help us out you could consider the patreon patreon.com slash whistlekick you've also got Oh, patreon.com slash whistle kick. Thank you, Andrew. Beautifully smooth. <laughs> nice and steady. Uh, you also got whistlekick.com slash family. Now, if you want to bring me to your school for a seminar, I would love to do it. Reach out to me. We will make it happen. Don't forget the code podcast15 gets you 15% off anything at whistlekick.com. And if you've got guest suggestions, topic, anything like that, I want to hear about it. Our social media is at Whistlekick. My email is jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew is andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Until next time, train hard, train hard smile, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.